Silver Hawaii! A fiery horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty hi Silver, the Lone Ranger. Tonto, the masked rat of the plains, fought crime and criminals throughout the western United States. But there was only one outlaw who could match the daring and cleverness of the Lone Ranger, and that was the black caballero who rode the midnight stallion El Diablo. It was a fight to the finish between the two men, and the story of their epic duel is one of the most exciting episodes in the history of the early West. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! The Black Cavalero has broken jail! Oh, Silver! Away! True to his boast, the Black Caballero escaped from the jail in White Springs less than two weeks after his arrest. He did not leave the district, however, and before long had resumed his career of crime. Our story continues several weeks later. Sheriff Ramsey has just dismounted before the ranch house of Alva Carlson and is knocking at the door. Oh, Sheriff Ramsey. Grace, where's your paw? You want to see me, Sheriff? Come on in. I'll do that same. You're looking powerful mad about something, Sheriff. Sit down, cool off a mic. Alva, what I got to say, I'll say standing up. Suit yourself. You filed a run for sheriff in the election next month. Mm-hmm, that's right. And you've been campaigning. Well, it's customary, ain't it, when you aim to get elected something? Maybe so, but you've been hinting some things around that I don't like. Yeah? I don't recall hinting nothing, Sheriff. You've been hinting that the Black Caballero couldn't have got loose from jail unless and I helped him get loose. You've been hinting I was bribed to see that he got free. Sheriff, I give you my word, I never hinted nothing of the kind. I got fellas to prove it by. You mean to tell me you never said any of them things? Sure I said them. Then why'd you say just now you didn't? Well, you must have heard me wrong, Sheriff. All I told you was I didn't go around hinting nothing. And I didn't. Everything I had to say, I said right out without beating around the bush. Why, you mealy mouse? That'll be enough of that. Pa, don't fight. Stay out of this, honey. Sheriff, what you just called me is fighting talk. Which is what I'm in it for. Strap on your hardware and we'll settle this right now. We're not going to have a gunfight. Scared, huh? No, but I happen to savvy that a shooting match is just what you're aiming for. You know blamed well you're handier with a gun than I am. And nothing would suit you better than to have an excuse to drill me so you could shut my mouth. And I'll do it. Not less than you shoot me in the back, you won't. Sheriff, this election is too important to the county for me to take any chance of letting a bullet put me out of the running. I'm going to stay alive. And when time for voting comes, I'm going to beat you. 
And then maybe we'll have some honest law enforcement around these parts. Where's your proof that I let the Black Caballero out? I ain't got proof exactly. Mm, just as I thought. But there's some things about that outlaw's escape that uh, all struck me sort of funny. First off, the night he got away, Steve was supposed to be on guard at the jail. And you trumped up an excuse to send Steve home and stay there yourself. You're just guessing. Maybe. In the second place, the window of the Black Caballero's cell was right opposite the window of the room in the Pilgrim Hotel where old Leif Sedgwick was staying that night. He told me he couldn't sleep the whole night through. He just sat up most of the time. And if anybody had sneaked up to that crook's window to pass a gun to him, like you claimed must have been done, then Leif would have heard it. Only he didn't. Then where'd the Black Caballero get the gun he pulled on me? <laughs> well, if he did have a gun... And if I'm just uh, guessing, like you say, why, I'd guess that uh, you must have handed it to him. That's a blasted lie. I only said I was guessing. All right. What other guesses you making? Well, uh, I guess I'd admire to know where from you got all the cash you've been spending lately. Been throwing it around kind of free, ain't you, for a fellow with a reputation of being uh, kind of saving? You haven't got one speck of proof of any sort. And if you keep on telling folks that you have, you're going to get into trouble. Sheriff, now you're getting things all wrong. I never tell them I got proof. I just tell them the same as I told you and give them the benefit of my conclusions. It ain't my fault if they agree with me, is it? Well, listen to me, Alva. Yeah? I didn't come out here to argue with you. I come to give you a warning. Then give it and get. Now get this, because I'm only telling you once. Drop out from the election. Tell folks that you had me figured wrong. But you're sure I never helped that outlaw get loose or take the consequences? Which same being... I've said all I've got to say. If you want to find out what I mean, just keep on the way you've been doing. And wake up one of these days to wish you hadn't. Well, uh, good afternoon, Sheriff. Hold on. I got one more thing to say. I can't stop you, I reckon. I've been noticing things lately. One of my deputies has been courting your girl here. <laughs> and if I'm right, he's been talking to you about me. Sheriff. Now you're just guessing. And guessing mighty close. So the next time he comes here and starts running free at the mouth, you tell him to keep it shut or find yourself another job. You, you'd fire Steve? Just so. And without a good paying deputy's job, maybe he wouldn't be in such a rush to get hitched. There's the door, Sheriff. You keep in mind what I said. And if you make the mistake of thinking I'm bluffing, it'll be the biggest mistake you ever made. Pa, what are you going to do? Huh? Uh, what do you mean, honey? Well, you well, you aren't going to run for office after what the sheriff just said, are you? Why not? But, but he'll do something terrible, Pa. I know he will. I know it. You think I'm as scared of him, daughter? Oh, it's not just him, Pa. No? The Black Caballero. If he's really working with the sheriff like you say, I mean... <laughs> Honey, quit your fretting. Your Pa's going to be the next sheriff of this county... And all the threats Ramsey can make between now and election ain't going to change things any. Oh, Silver! Listen. Oh. Daughter, he said Silver. Silver? Honey, that was the Lone Ranger. He's heard about the Black Caballero breaking loose, and he's come after him again. Now I know I'm going to keep up this fight. With the Lone Ranger on my side, I just can't be beat. <laughs> Leaving Alva Carlson's home, the masked man raced his great horse, Silver, back to the well-hidden camp he shared with his faithful Indian companion, Tonto. Tonto was absent, however, when he arrived, and it was almost an hour before the Lone Ranger caught the swift tattoo of scouts approaching hoofbeats. Tai, Kimosabe! I've got news for you, fellow. Uh, and me got news, too. Yes? Outlaw, fellow. Hold up stage. Go Whitfield. The Black Caballero? Ah. Tell her we've got to find a way to recapture that fellow. There's hardly a day passes that he or his men don't strike somewhere. Ah, uh, they may keep trouble. The news I got, Kimosabe, confirms our suspicions. Ah. Uh. I told you I was going to keep an eye on the sheriff. Well, I followed him to the home of Alva Carlson. And Carlson named several other reasons. Reasons I hadn't known about for suspecting Sheriff Ramsey. And what them? I'll tell you about them later. But when you add them to the fact that the Black Caballero has acted as though he's had advance information from someone in authority, it's almost certain. Uh, almost certain, however, isn't certain enough. We have to make plans until we're sure that can't be done. And what we do? I don't know yet. Tonto, what was taken from the Whitfield stage? Stage carry gold. And gold shipments are usually kept secret from everyone but the sheriff. 
Conway, are you sure it was gold? Who told you about this? Tonto ride, trail, meet, stage. Driver, tell Tonto. The driver of the stage that was robbed? Ah, uh, that right. Him ask me, tell Sheriff. And that must mean you're the first one back here with the news. Ah. Uh. The first one back. Tonto, how fast did you ride here? Tonto ride, he passed all way. And with scout speed, even if someone had met the stage just after you did, you'd still have got here at least an hour or two earlier. About an hour. I think I've got it. And what that? Do you recall I said we must be sure the sheriff was working with the black caballero before uh-huh. we could act? With luck, I'll be certain before the night's out. Here, Silver. Where you go? To White Springs, Tonto, to the sheriff's office. It'll be dark by the time I reach there. You want Tonto ride? I'll not need you. Steady, old boy. Stay here. If I'm not back by midnight, you'll know something's happened. Then ride. Tonto, do that. Now I've got to see the sheriff before news of the holdup can reach town. You take care. Right. I'll see you later. Come on, Silver. Come on, old fellow. It was several hours later. Sheriff Ramsey had summoned his deputy, Steve Hanley, to his office and was questioning the young man. Steve, angered by the sheriff's questions, finally lost his patience and... Blast it, Sheriff! What's it to you if I keep company with Alva's daughter? You think just because I'm working for you and her pa's running against you, I should stay away? Well, it'll look a heap better. What do I care how it looks? Me and Grace were friends long before I got this deputy's job. And if I got anything to do with it... We'll still be friends a long time after the job is done with. Maybe it won't be such a spell till you're rustling up another job. Meaning... Meaning uh, I don't like the way you've been telling things to Alva about me. What kind of a deputy are you to go talking again to the fellow that hired you? I never have. You must have. What makes you so doggone sure? Because some of the things Alva said sound just like they come from you. Oh, rot. I've seen things, Ramsey. Things that I've wondered about. But I don't take pay from a man, then go shooting off my mouth about him. That ain't my style. I got reason to think otherwise. What you got is a doggone uneasy unconscience. And instead of blaming yourself for it, you spend your time blaming everyone else. Oh, here, Steve. Good evening, Sheriff. Hey, you. what? Don't force me to draw, Steve. You? I warned you. Golly, masked man, who are you? What do you the want here? I can tell you who I am, Steve. He and I have met before. Tell him, Ramsey. Uh, I don't know anything about As you. As I recall, the last time I saw you, you were friendly. I ain't never friendly with crooks. Yes, and the last time, you didn't think me an outlaw. Uh, you, uh, you're local. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm still asking who you are. It doesn't matter. I've got other business here. Business with the sheriff. With me? Concerning the black caballero. Oh, him. And the stories that have been circulated saying his money found its way to your pockets to buy his way out of your jail. I can't answer for every tall yarn that's told about me. I wonder if you can answer for the truth. What? Sheriff, when first I heard these stories about you, I doubted them. I knew you'd made every effort to capture the black caballero the time he attempted to hold up the bank at River City. Too many facts, however, came up for me to continue to doubt. Say, stranger, do you know anything against the sheriff for sure? He can't. He's just talking through his hat. I know that the black caballero raided Lem Bisbee's place and took his cattle money not an hour after he'd received it. What's that got to do with me? You were with Bisbee and the cattle buyer when the sale was made. No one could have formed the black caballero easier than you. Ah. And arrangements were made through you to send money from here to be deposited in the River City Bank. The money never reached there. Still talking wild. Yeah, I'm wondering. Why are you? And I suppose you'll deny you told that outlaw about the diamond merchant who came here from Frisco. I never even knew he was headed and here. And just this afternoon... Blasted? And now I suppose I'm to blame for the Whitfield stage being held up. The Whitfield stage? Sheriff, who told you it had been held up? Huh? Oh, no I... one. But you knew beforehand. You knew the black caballero would strike. I didn't tell you the gold shipment had been taken. And no one else's town has heard of it yet. But you expected to hear of it, and that's why you fell into my trap. Uh, Stranger, you tripped him up dead to rights. It ain't so. I knew the stage was carrying gold, so... So when you mentioned something about this afternoon, I, I just guessed at the rest. Pretty doggone thin. Sheriff, you told me exactly what I want to know. That information is going to put you and your outlaw friend behind bars and see the election of an honest sheriff. You can't bluff me. The black caballero boasted that we'd meet again. We'll meet, however, in a way he won't like. Or maybe, mister, in a way you won't like. That remains to be seen. Sheriff, huh? you were threatening to... Silver. Silver? By heavens, now I know who that masked fellow was. He's a crook. Get the saddle and go after it. If you want him, Chase Ramsey, you can do it yourself. I'm still sheriff here. You're just a deputy and you're still taking orders from me. <laughs> what you mean, sheriff, is that I was a deputy. But beginning from right now, I ain't no more. You're a crook yourself. And not being able to prove it ain't gonna stop me from quitting. Quitting clear out and good riddance. It saves me the trouble of firing you. Which same I'd figure to be an honor. Oh, you... And if you was honest and I wasn't quitting, I still wouldn't go gunning for the Lone Ranger. (laughs) 
the curtain falls on the first act of our thrilling Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now to continue our story. After Steve Hanley had resigned his post as deputy and left the sheriff's office, the sheriff waited until he was sure his actions were not observed, then hastily mounted and rode across country. At the end of several hours, he entered a maze of canyons that chose his way unerringly until a voice hailed him. Hold up there. Who's riding this way? Whoa, 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 whoa. Ah, my good friend, the sheriff. Welcome. Why do you honor my camp tonight? Have you come for your share of the gold from the stage already? Didn't you trust me to send it to you? To blazes with the gold. What? You say that? <laughs> Forgive me if I seem surprised, Sheriff. <laughs> but knowing you... Quit it, what... will you? This is serious. <laughs> yes. The Lone Ranger's back in this country. Yeah, the Lone Ranger? Good. He got you before. Which makes him one up on the Black Caballero, Sheriff. But if he has returned... I have hopes of evening the score. There was something else, too. Well, get on with it. He was in to see me, and, well, uh, he found out about me tipping you off to that gold shipment today. You fool. If I'm ever caught, it won't be because of the cleverness of those who hunt me. It'll be on account of the stupidity of those I employ. Has he got proof against you? Can he have you turned out of office? Oh, it ain't that bad. It was just something I said. He couldn't make evidence out of it. Well... That's something, I suppose. So the Lone Ranger's returned, eh? Pedro! Si, sí, senor Caballero. Come here. You want me? Pedro, have you ever heard of a fellow known as the Lone Ranger? But of a certainty, senor. You'd know him when you saw him? Si, sí, senor. Good. And what if he does? Have you ever seen an Indian read sign? Sure I have. Well, where an Indian leaves off, Pedro begins. Didn't you say the Lone Ranger was in your office, Sheriff? He was, sure enough. Pedro, if the Sheriff points out where the trail begins, can you follow to where it ends? That will be most easy. My friend, you're to discover the Lone Ranger's camp. Hide nearby and learn what he plans. Si, senor. And when that is done, I shall pay back a debt I've owed since a certain day in River City. On the evening before, when the Lone Ranger had left the sheriff's office, he had returned to his camp, but he had paused there only long enough to assure Tonto of his safety. Then he had raced on. His journey took him to a town some distance away, and when he once more rejoined Tonto, it was on the evening of the following day. He drew Silver to a sliding halt and then leaped from the saddle. Oh, Silver! Oh, boy! Oh! <laughs> Tonto, I've been to see... What's the matter, Kimosabe? There's nothing matter. The Indian sign language. Kimosabe. Yes. You make fast trip. And it's time we get after the black caballero, Tonto. Oh. It's going to be several days before we can take action, however. I had some bad luck this trip, Tonto. What that? Silver began limping on the way back. I'm afraid he needs a rest. Oh, that heap bad. What you do? I stopped on the way and spoke to Alba Carlson. He's the rancher who's running for sheriff. Uh -huh. He agreed to loan me another horse and stable silver until he's well again. Why, you need other horse. I still have one more trip to make after information we need. I've heard that there's a man near High Junction who knows the Black Caballero's real identity. Oh. If we can learn that, it may give us a lead to his capture. Get some food ready, Kimasabi. When we've eaten, I'll take Silver to Carlson's place, borrow his horse, and get started again tonight. Tonto ride, too? You might as well, Tonto. There's nothing either one of us can do here until the trip is made. Yes, Tonto, we'll ride together. Pedro, who had trailed the Lone Ranger to his camp, had overheard the masked man as he outlined his course of action. When he saw the Lone Ranger and Tonto ride away, he returned to the camp of the Black Caballero. There, he repeated what he had heard. Oh, the Lone Ranger right to High Junction, huh? Si, senor. That is what he say. A journey of four days, then and back. Huh? And you're sure he said Silver would be left with Carlson? But yes, amigo. <laughs> Pedro, he's played into our hands. You have a plan, yes? I was just wondering what would happen if our good friend, the sheriff, were to tell the voters in the town that the Lone Ranger had been masquerading as me, the Black Caballero. 
I do not sabe, senor. And what do you think would happen if at the same time the sheriff would offer to prove that Carlson had helped the Lone Ranger turn outlaw? <laughs> Mr. Carlson, he would be in much trouble. I believe he would. But, amigo, how you do that? It's possible to get a black dye, Pedro. A dye that would make a white horse like silver into one like my El Diablo. Si, senor. And you will wish me to color this Lone Ranger's horse. No, my friend. That's something I will do. The last time I met the Lone Ranger, I nearly paid because a mistake was made. This time, I do things myself. And know they're done right. The following night, the cafe in White Springs was crowded with men from town and from the ranches. It had been rumored that the Lone Ranger had returned to again challenge the Black Caballero's cunning, and the men talked excitedly of what might happen during the next few days. Suddenly, the sheriff entered the cafe and demanded the attention of everyone present. I got something to tell you. What have you got to say? Man, I had a hunch about this outlaw situation in the county all the time, but I never said anything about it. Because I didn't have no proof. Proof of what? Men, the Black Caballero ain't been him at all. It's been the Lone Ranger. What? what? You don't even make sense. But I will. I never figured that the Black Caballero would have the nerve to stick around here after he bust jail. But with so many of you claiming to see him, I didn't think it was any use telling what I figured. You still don't make sense. Then tell me that this don't. The Lone Ranger turned outlaw. When the Black Caballero cleared out, he seen his chance. He dyed that white horse of his black, put on a black mask and cape, and got away with his crookedness without nobody suspecting him. I don't oh, believe it. Sheriff, you're getting plumb soft in the head. Ain't you talking kind of reckless, Sheriff? You couldn't make me believe that the masked fellow would turn crooked in a million years. Well, I'll show you. I'll give you the proof. It better be. And at the same time, I'll give you proof again the dirty crook that's in with him. Well, who who do you mean, Sheriff? Good evening, fellas. What's going on here? There, that's the fellow I mean. Alva Carlson. The crook that's trying to get my job. What the... Up with your hands, Alva. You and me are taking a ride out to your place. And these other fellows are going along to witness what I got to shoot. Right. The men in the cafe found it impossible to refuse the sheriff's demand that they accompany him to Carlson's ranch. They rode there in a body, the sheriff leading the way, his gun trained on his prisoner. Entering the grounds, Ramsey rode past the corrals, drawing rain at the stables. Oh, 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 there. Oh, oh, there. You better back up what you've been saying, Sheriff. It's going to be doggone tough on you if you don't. Now, where's this proof you was telling about? Show it to us. Come on, follow me inside the stables. Matt, was a lantern beside the door here. Light it, will you? I reckon. All right. Inside all of you. Hey, whose black horse is that there in the stall? <laughs> Think it's black, do you? I'll show you something. Now, where's that stuff I brung along with me? Oh, yeah, here it is. Wait till I wet this rag with it. That's a mighty powerful-looking horse. Of course it is. You never heard that silver wasn't powerful, did you? Oh, silver? You're loco. This horse is black. It looks more like that El Diablo horse, the black caballero rides. Yeah. Now, just watch. I'm going to rub this rag again the horse. Watch and see what happens. There. You can see it already. The black's coming off. It's fight underneath. Ramsey, this is some kind of a trick. Yeah? Well, that's what I've been telling you. A trick you and the Lone Ranger played together. Pa, what's the commotion out here? What are all these men doing in our stable? It's just some foolishness, daughter. Don't you worry, none. But, Pa... It's all right, honey. Oh, Steve, I didn't see you there. Just let the sheriff do what he aims to, Grace. He ain't proved nothing to me yet. Of course, you're most likely in with him. That's just about it. When I fired you from your deputy's job, I'll bet you joined up with these crooks in their slick scheme. I... Now, what in tarnation did I stumble into under the straw here? There. Well, doggone, if this don't clinch it. Look at here, man. A black mask and a black cape. What? Well, I'm getting so I don't know what to think. Matt, the sheriff's got to prove that's a Lone Ranger's horse before I can do anything. You ain't oh. denying it is, are you? I'm denying it. It's the masked man, the Lone Ranger. Where'd he come from? Who'd have thought he'd have the nerve to show up? So there you are. You can heist your hands, too. No, you don't. Drop that gun. Grab him, man. He can't shoot all of you. Go on. I demand you get him in the name of the law. One moment. I don't intend to shoot anyone. First, I'm going to show you that this horse inside the stable is not mine. 
Here, Silver. Hey, there comes another white horse. Tell us from outside. That's Silver, all right. When you see this one beside him, they don't even begin to compare. Look, what's the horse got on his back? Huh? Steady, Silver. Oh, you're going to untie me, Lord Ranger. It's a black caballero. Tied to the saddle. Try to untie him. Let him down. Uh, me fix him. Come in here, Marshal. Marshal? Man, this is the U.S. Marshal for this district. Dan Hughes. Ranger, I don't savvy this yet. Where'd you get the black caballero? How'd you happen to show up at the U.S. Marshal like this? I went after the Marshal the same night I talked to you and the sheriff in his office. Then I rode back alone to Tonto. The black caballero had sent a breed to spy on us, and Tonto had spotted him. He warned me in Indian sign language that we were being watched, and I played up to it. I let the breed think Silver would be left here in the stable while I went on a trip. In reality, the white horse they thought was Silver was one Carlson owned. When the black caballero showed up here tonight... The marshal and I let him finish dying the horse, then arrested him. So that's how you got proof against me. He squeezed. He didn't. You showed up here with these men just a half hour after the horse had been dyed black. And yet it takes almost an hour to ride here from town. In other words, when you were telling the men in town about this, the horse was still white. So you had to be in on the plot to know about it. <laughs> Lone Ranger, this is the second time you defeated me. But I'll make you a promise. Yes? <laughs> if my luck comes back to me, if we meet still another time in the future, I'll have this out man to man. And something tells me we shall meet. That's something only the future can tell us. Come on, Silver. This man won't get free again. Well, fellas, after all that's happened tonight, I, I reckon there ain't much doubt who's going to be elected sheriff, is there? The next sheriff's going to be Mr. Carlson. Right. If I am, Steve, you're going to be the first deputy I appoint. Thanks, Mr. Carlson. Oh, oh it ain't that I'll be needing you so bad, Steve, but uh, <clears throat> Grace there looks like she's getting primed to start ordering you around. So I figure I ought to have the right to do the same. <laughs> The black caballero's gang has broken him from jail. I owe silver. How just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. Thank <laughs> you.